This week's lesson is focused on Jacob, Israel. At one point, Jacob, the supplanter, had believed that he deserved all things to come his way. However, now, on his own and on the run, he realizes that they weren't his for the taking. The blessings were God's for the giving. And Jacob will learn this the hard way. First, let's go back to Genesis 28. Verse 10 says, Then Jacob departed from Beersheba and went towards Haran. Verse 11, He came to a certain place and spent the night there because the sun had set. Two crucial facts are mentioned in verse 11. The first one is a certain place and the other phrase the sun had set. On the first point, certain place, the word place is repeated five times in this chapter. It's the spot where Jacob spent the night. It is also referred to as the land, this land. And Jacob in awe of the dream about the ladder from heaven explained this place is none other than the house of God. This place is the gate of heaven. That's verse 17. He called the place Bethel, which means the house of God. He then makes a bargain with God in verses 20 to 22. And he departs as he departs from that place, the Bible says that the sun had set. And so Jacob's journey out of the promised land is described here as walking into the sunset. And for the next 14 years, his life of toil and struggle will be as it was living in the twilight. His uncle Laban will deceive him, a painful reminder of his own deception. But God throughout these years will continue to be faithful to his promise. And he blesses him with children and herds of animals. Eventually, he ran away in fear of his father-in-law. But distress awaits him because Esau is coming with 400 men to meet them. His fear of him is palpable, and he turns to his only help. And in chapter 32 of Genesis, verse 9, Jacob, on his knees, prays, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, O Lord, Yahweh, who said to me, return to your country and to your relatives, and I will prosper you. Verse 10 says, I am unworthy of all the loving kindnesses and all the faithfulness to which you have sown your servant. For my staff, only I cross this Jordan. Now I have become companies. Verse 11, deliver me, I pray, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Israel, for I fear him. Deliverance came in the middle of the night with a mysterious man who wrestled with him until daybreak. The man then blessed him and changed his name to Israel. The man said to Jacob, your name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with divine beings and human and have prevailed. The new name Israel, Yasha, describes his struggle to prevail. And it's crucial to note that this wrestling and prevailing took place just as the sun was rising. And so Jacob has moved out of his twilight years, is now on the promised land, and has been given a new name. Genesis 32, verse 31, Now the sun rose upon him just as he crossed over that spot, and he named 
Peniel, which means I have seen the face of God. I have seen God face to face, yet my life has been preserved. Please also note the name Jacob, Yaakov, is not just supplanter. It also means crooked. However, the name Israel can also be read Yashael. The Hebrew word Yasha means straight, honest, honorable, law-abiding. In biblical usage, it also means righteousness, God-fearing. The names in the ancient Jewish world carried a very important weight. A name spoke of a person's character, his deeds, his identity. And for a person to be given a new name meant a change in their identity. And thus, we begin to understand the meaning of this amazing transformation in Jacob's life. Israel is the one whom God makes straight as opposed to being crooked and uneven. In Genesis 33, we witness the beautiful scene of reconciliation between Jacob and Esau. Esau, who brought 400 armed men to this meeting, obviously didn't have a peaceful intention. Everything suddenly changed. During this encounter, they both wept, kissed, and reconciled. Then they began talking to each other. Beautiful scene. And note Jacob's speech. Go through it. Very polite and God is mentioned in every sentence, while Esau does not mention God at all. The attitudes are completely different. While Esau says, I have plenty, Jacob states, I have everything. Esau speaks of wealth, while Jacob speaks of sufficiency. You see, Jacob has come a full circle. In Genesis 35, God calls him back to Bethel, where he exited last. At Bethel, he called upon his family, and I read verse 2 of chapter 32, Put away the foreign gods which are among you, purify yourselves, and change your garments. Verse 3, And I will make an altar there to God, who answered me in the days of my distress, and has been with me wherever I have The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, has become the God of Israel. What an amazing journey. What an amazing God. Happy Sabbath. Welcome to another study hour with Breath of Life, Antonio Assassin. I'm so happy that you are able to join us this morning because we have another wonderful study. Last week we were talking about Jacob, you know, how he deceived and did a lot of wrong in his early age. But now there's a second part to that where he was changed and God was continued to work with him. And we are excited to talk about that because it tells us about who our God is. So, get your Bibles. Let's talk about it. We're going to have a good time doing so. I'll see you inside. Hi. Happy Sabbath. And thank you again for joining us here at T. Sasser and Breath of Life Study Hour. This week, we are, we are still talking about uh, Jacob. And this study is going to be a wonderful study because we are continuing this, this uh, uh, the Jacob time frame where he was a deceiver. He was doing things that was wrong when he, when, his, when he was young. But now we are starting to see where he's going into a different uh, area of, 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 of study on, the, on, on, on Jacob. But I want you to join us, and um, I'm glad that you're here. So like and subscribe, and um, 
join us in this study. But first, before we do that, I want to introduce my panel. To my left here, we have Hayden, um, Hayden Edwards. Thank you again for coming. And to my right, we have Erlon Adams. And these gentlemen were here. Thank you for coming, Erlon. These gentlemen were Pleasure here us. with us last week. And this week, they're joining us again. So it's a, it's a privilege that we are able to have these two gentlemen. All right. But first, we want to, we want to say a prayer. We want to invite the Holy Spirit to come and join us. So I'm going to ask uh, Erlen, would you, would you pray for us this time? Sure, let's have a prayer. Thank you. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we want to thank you for all that you've done for us, Lord. Even in blessing us to come here safely. We pray, O oh Lord, that as we get into this study, that your spirit will be with us, be within this place. Help us, O oh Lord, to understand what we are speaking about and help the viewers and those who are listening in, O oh Lord, to hear and to understand also, O oh Lord, so that there will be elements of a blessing, and, and, and there will be so much more, O oh Lord, that you could give us, O oh Lord, through these studies. Thank you for all that you've done for us and what you're going to do for us. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. 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 All right. So this week, we are talking about Jacob. This, the topic here is Jacob and Israel. Last week, you know, it was Jacob the supplanter, and we, we understood that he was a deceiver. He, he was deceived, um, deceiving his, 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 his father. He deceived his brother. He, de he, was, he was deceiving. And now, and then we learn that as he went into uh, uh, a different area of, um, of, uh, uh, of his life, he was continuing to change. He was, he was beginning to change and to see things differently. But now we see here that Jacob and Israel, where does that come in? Where, where Jacob and Israel, I'm, I'll, I'll explain to us how this fits the story into where we left off um, last week. What you're asking is how Jacob became Israel? Well, it says here Jacob and Israel. So explain to us. What, what is that? How, what is that about? Is it that a change of name? How did Jacob and Israel become a focal point of this study? Well, when you look at, and I would prefer to read it because when you read it, it's a little clearer. Okay, okay. I prefer to read it. It's found in Genesis chapter 32, starting from verse 3. Okay. It says, And Jacob sent messages before him to Esau, his brother, unto the land of Seir, mm -hmm. the country of Edom. Mm -hmm. And he commanded them, saying, Thus shall ye speak unto my lord Esau, mm -hmm. thy servant Jacob, saith, Thus I have sojourned with Laban, and stayed there until now. Mm -hmm. verse, verse 5. And I have oxen and asses, flocks and men, men servants, and women servants, and I have sent to tell my lord that I may find grace in thy sight. Mm -hmm. Now I want to skip on down to... So um, this, this, this verse that you're reading is actually saying, is letting us know that he's about to leave. He's about to leave Laban. Is that what, we, that what we've seen there? He has already left Laban. He already left Laban. That's okay. right. All right, good, good. Okay. All right, so he already left Laban, uh, Laban area. So what, what, okay, so what's that verse you're getting, re getting ready to have us listen to now? Well, I want to skip down to verse, uh, let me see. Let's skip down to verse... Verse 20. Okay. So we had 32 verse 20. Verse 20, yes. I okay. want to get to the meat of it. All right. Based on the question that you asked. Okay. And say ye moreover, more, moreover, behold, thy servant Jacob is behind us. For he said, I will appease him with the present, with the present that goeth before me, and afterward I shall see his face. Peradventure he will accept of me. Mm -hmm. So went, so went the present over before him, and himself lodged that night in, in the company. Mm-hmm. Verse 22, and he rose up that night and took his two wives mm -hmm. and his two women servants mm -hmm. and his 11 sons and passed over the, over the for Jabbok. And he took them and sent them over the brook and sent, and sent over that he had. Mm -hmm. And Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. Wow. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, mm -hmm. he touched the hollow of his thigh, mm -hmm. and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Okay. And he said, let me go for the day break it. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. 
And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For mm. as a prince hast thou power with God and with men and hast prevailed. This is where you see the name change okay. from Jacob to Israel. So, so this, this, is the, this is a time where he was journeying some, going towards to see his brother. And he was on his way to see his brother. And this is where he started to wrestle with, with, on, on the way to see his brother, he started to wrestle with this person, with this, um, with this person, and that person allowed him. Um, uh, that person changed his name because he was wrestling with him, and he prevailed. Well, tell us about that. What, 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 what is what was going on? That lead us into that story. Tell us, a, tell us a story that leads us into that because I'm, I'm, I'm getting bits and pieces, and I'm pretty sure my views are. So fill in the blanks for me on that. Well, the blanks are that um, Jacob had been with his uncle uh -huh. for about 20 years. Okay, okay. He, seven years for Leah, seven years for Rachel, and then an additional six years just working and mm -hmm. gathering wealth. The Lord okay. said, it's time to go back. If you remember that when Jacob ran away, his mother said that I'm going to, when, when Esau's um, anger goes away, I'm going to send for you. Right. Um, I bet they didn't think it was going to be 20 years, but it was 20 years. Right. And now the Lord's saying, you need to go back. You need to go and face mm -hmm. your enemy. You need okay. to go and face your sin. You need to go back to the land that was promised to you. Okay. Another, another thought on, on um, this blessing. We, we talked a couple of weeks ago last week about how God had promised Rebecca mm -hmm. that the younger was going to be greater. Right. And the, then they the older was going to serve the yes. younger. Right. And mm -hmm. they stole the birthright. Mm -hmm. They stole the blessing. Mm -hmm. And now, 20 years later, um, Jacob is struggling with a messenger from God. Mm -hmm. Most believe it was God. Mm -hmm. Struggling to get a blessing. Jacob's life is full of these struggles to get a blessing. Mm. But this will be the most significant one that he will get yet. It was this blessing. That made a difference. That, that, was, made, that, that was the promise. That was Amen. The, right. It Amen. was this, this blessing. Promise. Amen. Mm. Um, if, they had, if he had not gone to his uncle's Laban's house, mm. he would have still gotten this blessing. If he had not um, supplanted Esau, mm. He still would have gotten this blessing. He set, he set out to get what God had promised him. Right. He didn't see how God could do it. Right. But now, 20 years later, God is doing okay, it. Okay, so Amen. basically what you're saying is that he went around his own way to get what God has promised him. And it was not authentic until he went through this struggle and God blessed him himself. But grace and mercy... Even in his foolishness, mm -hmm. God told him, go back home. Okay. And he's still conniving. Okay, we're going to send um, um, Leah's handmaids and mm -hmm. Rachel's handmaids and then Leah and her kids. And right. now that we're going to bring up the rear right. just in case God who told me to go home right. was not true to his promise. So basically Jacob, he was trying to find another way. Yeah, Jacob to, was still supplanting. Oh Jacob my was still not ready to yield himself to Christ. Amen. Wow. You wow. know, you know, while reading this here, I find I found this so interesting. You know, we've watched boxing matches before, and you know, mm. a boxing match would only last like about an hour. Okay. When I read this, I said, Man, how this man had to be, you know eager he had to have some some his mind had to be so strong for a man to wrestle from sunset all the way until sunrise the next morning he was determined i mean listen you think about it you yeah. wrestle with your son or wrestle with somebody for 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 you a minute tired. man you you worn out yeah you worn out you know yeah. but he wrestled all through the night mm. until the breaking of the day and wow. he, and, and listen he but it, it says here that he prevailed he prevailed. That's the good part yeah. about it is that he prevailed. He didn't give up. Yes, he did not give up. He was determined to receive that blessing. And so what that tells me is that we have to have some form of determination, determination. 
to want to serve this almighty God of ours. That's right. So that we will follow him wherever he goes. That's I mean, right. it's not that it is, it's something like a fluke or something. We have to determine, we have to make up our minds. And just like Jacob at this moment made up his mind that he wanted to receive that blessing because he was tired of that foolishness, like he said, that foolishness that he was doing. He That's knew right. what he was doing was wrong. He knew it was deception. He knew it was deceiving. But the thing is, is that he knew it at that time and he was tired of it. Hmm. He was tired of it. So that's that's awesome, man. I, I really I really appreciate that. So what's going? So now, this so at this moment we, we can identify that this person that he was wrestling he was wrestling with God as Hayden said he was wrestling with God at this moment. And so God at this at this moment was was granting him mercy because at, I mean he could have easily been um, taken out at that moment, right. but he just happened to touch his hip and 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 paralyze him a little bit. Or, 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 or you know, make him weak a, a little bit so that he can he can get away. So that, now, okay, yeah, you, that is when he realized he was fighting with somebody, some, somebody that was super. Of a superpower, yes. Yeah. Su so he was not a normal because human being. it's a possibility. He probably thought it was one of Esau's men or Esau himself. Okay, okay, okay. That he was right because remember it's dark, you know, sun is set and so forth, mm -hmm. and a man just began to just wrestle with you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you don't know who it is, right. but it's not until. The man touched the hollow of his thigh and it went out of joint that he realized, nah, this is not a wow. regular man that I'm dealing with here. Mm. This is somebody of, of a supernatural power here. That you he know? was able to That understand. he was, exactly. And when he realized that, he, guess what? He held on even more now. Mm. Now the fight really begins. Right, because he wanted to receive He wanted to blessing. receive that blessing. Amen, amen. All right, so, so now, okay, so now he is, so, so he has separated his camp. He went and had his wrestle. Now, what, what, what transpired after that? What, what's going on after that? Did he, did he go and meet his brother? How did that go down? He went to meet his brother. Yeah. He went to meet his brother, but did, I mean, was it, I, was it what he expected? Well, well, the thing about it is he was now more prepared mm -hmm. to meet his brother. But still, although he was prepared, he still took precautions. Okay. Yes. Okay. He still took took precautions, you know. So you know he was prepared. He, you know, he, he, you know, he. When you say prepared, you're talking about mentally. He was mentally prepared, spiritually prepared. What, how, what, what do you mean by? by I have prepared? wrestled with God and I have prevailed. He prevailed. Yes. So he was he was ready. He was set. He was braced. Okay. Okay. He was braced and ready, but okay. still, it, for, to me, it's still like there was a question mark in his in, in his mind, mm. and he still put things put things in order just in case. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Esau, things didn't turn out the way that he wanted to. But I think that in this story, it's, it's, it's where does the trust? I mean, because it seems exactly. like there was a lack of trust going on. I, I, I believe this story reminds me exactly of the story of when Jesus himself was on the earth mm -hmm. and he got in the boat after a day of preaching. And he mm -hmm. said to the to the disciples, let's cross over to the other side. Mm -hmm. That 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 little verse often gets overlooked. And the storm comes up. It got overlooked by the disciples. Right. The storm comes up and they're like, Master, you, you gonna, you, you, you gonna let us die out here? He's sleeping. Jesus said, let's cross over to the other side. So what he's saying that regardless of the storms that come, mm -hmm. I got you. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. with you. Hey, yeah. Jacob, go, go home. Go home. I've made a promise to you mm -hmm. that I'm gonna make you a mighty nation. So, um, I'm not saying to throw all precautions to the wind, but God said, go home. So you need I'm to gonna make you a mighty nation. Move forward in faith because mm. God's got your back. Mm. He the command oftentimes in life we move without God's command. Mm. And that we, we run into um um precarious situations and that's when we should be yelling, Master save us. But mm. when God says you move if the storm is coming, God told me to move. If the rain is coming, God told me to move. Right. Tornadoes, God told me to Amen. move. Amen. And if he's sending me, he's yes. going to keep me. Right. That is, and that takes great faith. You see, often we quote, you know, faith is the substance of things hoped for. And, you know, everybody, you know, many of us know that quotation. But faith, real faith, you know, when you put it in our own words, faith is believing in the word of God and that it, the word, is going to accomplish what it set out to accomplish. Amen. 
That is faith. That is faith, yeah. Settling into that faith, yeah. believing, yeah. you know, despite what may come, whether it's a storm, whether Esau is coming, God said, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bless you, I'm going to bless you, indeed. you just wrestle with me. There's no need to put any precautions. Go on, you know. You, if he take you there, he's going to take gonna, you out. That is faith. That, and, and listen, and that's why, you know, when Christ said that we have to become once again like little children. Mm -hmm. Wow. We have to become like little the children. Childlike faith. Yes. Okay. That's right. Childlike faith. Amen. Amen. Knowing that our Father's going to protect us. But I think at the same time, we're not going to understand it all. So when we're commanded to know, I know this is the absolute voice of God. I think one of the reasons why I, I was going through these stories, why are these stories in here? Right. The, Jacob, um, um, Abraham was, spo spoke to, was spoken to with the very voice of God, and he failed. Mm. Um, uh, Adam and Eve were in that garden. That was one of the first couple lessons. Mm -hmm. We're in the garden, and, they, and the, the scripture implies that they were meeting with God in the cool of the day, right. and yet they failed. Right. So even with the distance that's now put between us and God, he knows we're going to fail. But then he came down to Abraham, and in the midst of his failure, he still gave him grace and mm. blessed him. Adam and Eve, in the midst of his, their failure, mm. grace and blessed him. And here is Jacob in this week's story, in the midst of his failure. He's just coming out of, of, of his lack of trust, mm. of usurping his, his brother, right. and, and dealing with his whole situation with Laban and now bringing the family out and separating them because he, even though God told him to go through, um, he, he was still afraid. Grace and mercy unto him. So God is even telling us today, listen, when I send you out there and you mess up, I'm not making fun of you. I'm not putting you on blast. I'm not even blaming you. I sent my son Right. To take care of that stuff. Amen. I still Amen. have grace and mercy. You just have to accept it. Yeah. You just have to you take just, it on yeah, to, you, you just, to yourself. Yeah. Just like Jacob did in this story. And we see that he met with his brother. Mm. He came running like the prodigal son. Oh, man. Came mm. running unto um, the father. Right. Sure. That, that he expected um, warlords. Right. And death, he, he destruction, opposition. He, he, and he Esau came something. with with Christ-like grace and mercy. That's right. Wow. You, I, I, it seems as if more was done to the character of Esau, Esau. Come mm. on. than it was to the character of oh, Jacob yeah. in these twenty years. Mm. Esau grew. As a man, he right. he learned. Remember, he was going to kill him. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah, but but and 20 he wasn't years interested. Yeah. He was not interested in the birthright yeah. and the blessing. Yeah. At the time, he was interested in the blessing, but he wasn't interested in the birthright. So but, so so Esau grew. I would even say, based on we we don't hear much about Esau, right, right. but we see what his what his character showed us at that meeting. Right. Um, grace and yeah. mercy. Mm. I'm excited about this because, I mean, I'm starting to see a lot of different things in here. One of them is actually the character of Christ, a character of God showing over and over again in our faults. And I think that's important because it's almost like he is wanting, he's wanting us to trust in him. And he is saying, even though you may show a little doubt, I still got your back because I want to show you that I'm here with you all the time. as what Jacob did. Mm. Wow. Wow, I'm, I'm excited about that. All right, so now these guys are, have met. They, all, they reunited. The families are reunited. I mean, you know, they, they're excited about this, this, this relationship and this building. But now we take us to another phase of this, of this, of this study where they come together. The family is growing. Um, everybody is comfortable back in the homeland. They are all worshiping and, 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 and acknowledging who, who the true uh, 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 creator is. But now there's a, there's a situation growing in the camp. What is that about? First of all, the, the situation is that um, Jacob was supposed to be getting, his, getting back to Bethel. Okay. That's what okay. he promised. And even he told Esau, Esau would, didn't really want to accept any gifts. He's like, good, I'm, my pockets are full. Right. 
I don't, I don't need what you have. Right. Uh, but okay. Jacob said, go on ahead of me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to join you. And he doesn't. He oh. goes to Shechem. And that's oh. where trouble ha happens. So he so didn't what, follow the instructions of what God had told him to follow. So, yeah. And we're really not given much in the narrative about why. But could it be the eight, um, even all of this that has transpired, grace and mercy, grace and mercy, grace yeah. and mercy, he was still afraid. Yeah. Could have been. I mean, could, have been, could it have been that he has a little bit of doubt in there? Because we still saw that even though he wrestled with God in this time and, and he, he got the blessings, he says he prevailed, his name was changed, but yet he was still he had a little doubt. Through. Yeah, he, he had a little doubt where he wanted to make sure that everything was set before he met Esau. But then he didn't follow through. So is it possible that we are the same? We still see, you know, things. God is blessing us with, 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 with things. God has come through with, our, with what we pray for, what we, what we ask, and we are, we, we are granted these things. And we see the evidence of God working in our lives, but yet we try to go before him. We, we're doing things outside of what he wants us to do. Is it possible that this is that same scenario? I, I believe this is the reason why these lessons are so important and mm. A careful study of it, okay. careful study of, of Jacob, Israel, you know, the wrestling, the, and what took place in his life over those 20 years is very important for us to actually study and see, you know, um, Jacob and, and his faith, you know, his failures, I believe you mm -hmm. mentioned that um, last week, his failures, his victories and so forth, and how we can actually take these lessons now and apply it to our lives, mm. you know. And, and I believe once we start applying these, these, these lessons to our lives, you know, we'll begin to see that if we're going to serve God, we must have full faith. Mm -hmm. There cannot be any kind of half-stepping. Okay. If we, you know, we believe that God is going to lead us, he is actually going to save us, we have to have full faith. Okay. You know, and I believe that all of these stories in the word of God is there as a lesson for us mm. to learn and to mm. understand, especially in these last days, we must have faith. We must fully settle into his truth. Into his truth, okay. We must. So, but, this, but the lessons are like, uh, used in normal people. It seems like the lessons and the characters in, in these stories are people who are not perfect, people who are not, uh, uh, has errors just in like their us. lives, just like us. Just like us. But at over time, they are growing into that relationship, growing into that that solid um, obedience and and faith in Jesus Christ. That they grow from this doubtfulness. We saw that in Abraham. We saw it in Isaac, where they grow in faith as they went on. And so yeah. we, we is this we're going to see. Is it possible that we're going to see Jacob with doing that same thing? And that is a lesson also for us because we sometimes start with baby steps. Yeah, yeah we can't, we can't give we up. Can, we, you know, but we continue to grow. We continue to go over to, to get over those humps, those those sins that are still in our in our path. We yeah. we, we we work towards getting them and setting them aside. And why is that? Why is that? Because we, we despite all of that, we must keep our eyes fixed. Mm -hmm. On Christ, yes. Amen. We must keep our eyes fixed. If we take our eyes off of, off of Christ, you know, it'll we'll just be accumulating sin unto ourselves. Wow. We must keep our eyes fixed on Christ mm. and be honest with ourselves right. and be honest with Him Amen. as to our true nature, who we really are. Mm. And once we are honest with Christ, you know, I believe now He'll begin to open up ways. You know, just like Jacob. Mm -hmm. You know, and, it's, and you mentioned it before, grace and mercy, mm -hmm. grace and mercy will be a continuous thing because we're honest with God. Lord, this is my condition. This is who I am, mm -hmm. you know, and confessing our sins mm -hmm. and letting them, Lord, this is who I am. Now you have to help me Just because lay it all I down. cannot, I can't help myself. Yeah. Lay it all out. I lay it all out on the table. I cannot help myself. I know you have something, uh, something for me. Mm -hmm. I know that you want to save me, but it's impossible for me to save myself. Yeah. It's impossible for me to help myself. Mm -hmm. You must help me. Here I am. Empty. Empty. Now this is what you have to deal with. Really wow. 
I think as, as we go on in the story and Jacob gets to Shechem, we're seeing that the, the coward that ran from his brother, mm -hmm. the coward that could not even stand up to Laban, the coward that, that finally started to, to mature and, and fought and struggled with God, the coward has returned. Mm. His daughter was violated, mm -hmm. um, and Jacob had nothing to say. He had nothing to say. He was silent. Something was wrong in Jacob's home. And I believe that that wrong started in Isaac's home with the mother. Um, and now that something ha um, extended over to Laban's home. And he married a woman that he didn't even love. Mm. And now that wrong is sitting right in front of him. His daughter has been violated. And he has he, nothing, he has nothing to say. He has nothing to say. The, 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 and the, the scripture said that he was... Um, he was at peace. Yeah. He, 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 and the, the boys were gone, mm -hmm. and he was, he was content mm -hmm. for his daughter's shame to be upon his house because he had nothing to say. He was, he was a coward. He, was, he did not move from his place, mm -hmm. but yet he was running. He had a responsibility as a father, and yet he said nothing. He had, he had a daughter that needed to be protected, and, mm -hmm. to, and yet there was nothing on his mind. And when his sons came back from the field mm -hmm. and saw that their father was impotent in action, impotent in words, they took to themselves the, 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 the act of, of, of restoring the honor to their family. When I, yes, when I yes, read it, yes, yes, go yes. ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say something. I Just see a point at the same time in a, reading it over again, I saw a different view also. Tell us. Mm -hmm. You know, because I see the action that Jacob's sons, they took, mm -hmm. and they wanted to took, you know, their, their whole, their action. I, I, I saw all of that. Could it be also that, that, that Jacob was willing to allow God to deal with that situation in his own time? Hmm. Okay, well, the verse says... Because he was a meek man. Right, he was a meek man because it yeah. says here, Jacob heard that he had, he, that, that this, this guy, um, uh, one of, one of uh, Shechem, um, spake, and he, uh, it says, Jacob heard that Shechem had defiled um, Dana, his daughter. Now his sons were with his cattle in the field, and Jacob held his peace until they come. So this is found in, um, in, in, in Genesis chapter 4, and this is verse 5 uh -huh. that I'm reading. And it says that, And Hamor, the father of Shechem, went out unto Jacob to commune with him. And the sons of Jacob came out of the field when they heard it, and the men were grieved, and they were very wroth, because he had wroth folly in Israel in lying with Jacob's daughter, which thing ought not to be done. So, so, so this is something that should not have taken place. But like you said, um, it seems that, that Jacob at this time, who is Israel at this moment, supposed to, it was reasoning with the father of Shechem. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm trying, to, trying to understand what's going on here. So, and that's why I said, you know, I, when I, after reading it a second time, you know, reading it again, mm -hmm. you know, perhaps Jacob could have learned from his mistakes. When you, when you, you know, into jumping to conclusion, jumping to conclusion, okay, okay I you see, know, I see what you know, in other words, by you know, taking things taking the birthright, taking things in right. his own, taking, taking it, things it, it, in it, into his own will, to get I, the birthright I, yeah, the first time yeah, instead yeah. of waiting on God right, and receiving right. the, the, the the blessing, right, you know, right. but this time you know instead of taking things into his own hand, he's going to sit back and let uh, perhaps let God allow God to deal with the situation. Okay. But there you know? still was trouble in the family. Of course, I agree. There okay. was still trouble because, yes, there was. because of what the sons did right, next. Right, right, right. Because now you see the sons were all already angry. So what did they do next? What, 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 tell us what's going on. What, what, what did they do next that, that make, us, make, make, us, make, make you feel that, or, or explain what you mean that there's trouble in the camp. In, well, in the, the, camp. the, the sons, um, they came to an agreement to gain this woman's hand mm -hmm. in marriage that the men of the city would um of the family would be circumcised okay and okay. the sons waited until they were in a weakened condition and then go, went and utterly wiped them out okay so basically this it was a setup it was a setup basically 
Okay, so is this the same deception type of thing that you see? It's the same thing that Hayden was just saying, yeah. that there's trouble in the family. Okay. We're talking about a dysfunctional family yeah. as a whole. Okay. You so know? basically, this is, a, this, is, this is going on still in this family where they are basically conniving. They're conniving. It's wow. one of those families that if they were here today, you know, these men, men would not be elders and, and deacons and so forth because they'll be judged. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here, here, is, here, is, here is this family that is a dysfunctional family. Right. A dysfunctional family that God is still granting grace and mercy to. Um, despite the errors, despite their wrongdoing, God is still granting mercy. What does that tell us about who God is? What does it tell us about who God is? Patient and long-suffering. Yeah, we, we talked about, I mentioned this in the last lesson, I might have mentioned it in the first one that I was um, on, that in Daniel 7, mm. there is a court scene, and we even see it in the story of Job, mm. where the universe is looking on at us. Most of the time, we paint this as God, a, a judgment scene. God mm -hmm. is judging us. Mm -hmm. But, which is probably true. Daniel 7, I don't remember the verse, I'll look it up. But most importantly, God is being judged. Mm. Um, um, when the, God came to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, um, um, Abraham said, will the, will the judge of all the earth do wrong? Mm. Will God do wrong? The, the judgment that's going on, there was an accusation made at the first tree, Adam and mm -hmm. Eve's tree, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. God is not fair, right. God is not just, right. God is not right. right. And here, mm -hmm. once again, even in this story and all the ones before and all the runs yeah, after, after right. that God is the one, how God deals with his servants mm -hmm. is what is being judged. Can there was an, accu an interna intergalactic accusation that God's not fair, and now God is proving over and over, over and over and over again that he is fair, that his judgment, when he judges, He's he just. judges with mercy, mm -hmm. he judges with truth, mm -hmm. and his judgment and his, and his mercy is everlasting and long-suffering. Amen. That God, even with the raggedy way that... Um, Jacob is behaving, even the raggedy way his mother behaved, even the raggedy way that his grandfather behaved, that God is still good and his mercy endures forever. And when he judges the, the universe, the, the other um, unfallen worlds can look and say, God is true, God is good. These attacks from the devil are, were a big lie. They need, the, and that's the only way that um, the security of everlasting will be secured. If God, mm. it doesn't matter how I'm judged. Right. You know, uh, if God is judged, that when, when you look down at my name, Hayden, on the books, mm. and they look at my life and how I lived it and how God intervened, mm. and they looked at the life of Jacob and how God intervened, mm. that they can say that God is just mm -hmm. and that this is not a plaything. This is not um, a happenstance. God judged Jacob with with mercy and grace, and He do the same thing for me mm -hmm. and you. Mm -hmm. And I believe that that's one of the points of these stories of the goodness of God. And there there are others that are watching to see how God behaves in well, these situations. And, and, and again, and again, you, you, you see it over and over again, how God is granting mercy and grace to the different characters in the Bible. And you, you can't help but know that he's continuously doing it to all of us. Mm -hmm. He's continuously doing it to you, Erlon, and to me, and to him. Okay. So we are constantly under the mercy and grace of God as we, as we ask for forgiveness, as we ask for, for guidance, as we, we submit ourselves. He is willing with open arms to continue to do that for to do Amen. that with us and for us. But because again, as you look in the story, um, uh, so here is, so as, as you look in the story, we continuously see it, even in the last phases of, the, of this study, we are understanding that, as uh, you said, Hayden, that he was supposed to go to Bethel originally, right? 
He was supposed to go to Bethel originally. He didn't go. He ended up in, in, this, Shechem. in Shechem. And and now, while he's there, he got into this situation, and and he got into this situation with 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 this with the people that are around him. The Canaanites and, and so the, forth. The, Can, the Canaanites. And so so now. He, instead of him being more concerned for his family, he's concerned about his reputation with these people. You see what I'm saying? It seems that he was more concerned about it. But, but it seems that it says here, it says here, immediately after Jacob's complaint that his peace with the Canaanites had been compromised, and it was compromised because of the Nehemiah. Simeon said, and Levi. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the sons was, was, was brutal. Wild and out. Yeah, yeah, they were, they were wild and out. And after his sons were rebuked, God continues to urge he didn't discard him. He did not. He did not say, "You know what? You're not, I'm going to leave you to your own devices." He came back and he, he urged Jacob to go, go to, to where he was supposed to go in the first place. Mm -hmm. But if you notice, even when you move on to Wednesday, um, Wednesday's lesson, mm -hmm. you know, you see one of the reasons why mm -hmm. they had to leave that place mm -hmm. because they began to adopt a lot of the customs of the land. Okay. And the customers, of the, what, what does that mean, customers of the land? The customs, customs of, the of the land, land, well, their way of living. Okay. You know, for one thing, you know, you see, we see um, what's, what's her name, Dinah. Mm. You know, you ask yourself, you know, Dinah went to actually go and look out the women in the, in the land. What, what did she go there for? For what? She went to hang out with them. She yeah. went to hang out with them. Okay, well, you know. Well, was she supposed to do that? That probably wasn't part of the, well, that's, the instructions that was given. Well, that's one time. of the, you know, and going to you know, searched the land and, you know, she ended up getting caught up and mm. that's one of the situations with, you know, Shechem, she ended up, you know. Right. Yeah, you know, and that's one. In addition to that, when you get to Wednesday's lesson, you know, you see where it says, you know, of course the heading is prevailing idolatry. Say so immediately after Jacob's complaint that his peace with the Canaanites mm. had been compromised, you had mentioned it, that he was more concerned with his reputation than with his family, right? right? And after his two sons were rebuked, God urges Jacob to leave Shechem and return to Bethel in mm. order to renew his covenant. Mm. Indeed, the Lord tells us that once he gets there, he needs to build an altar. Over now, and over and over, you see this recommitment. Okay, so this, this altar, isn't the altar a form of worship? Isn't that like a sacrifice, an altar to acknowledge who God is? Is that one of the reasons why That's one of the they, reasons bu they build the altar? Is is the what is that? Were they were they adapting to how the Canaanites were worshiping the the, the 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 customs of what they were doing? What what was the reason why they had? What what was one of the other reasons why you mentioned well, that he why, had to leave? Well, well, one of the reasons why because when you get onto the next paragraph, it says, "Meanwhile, the first thing recorded after God's command to is is Jacob." telling his people to put away the Canaanite idols. Okay. So they were, you know? they were, put, they were adapting. They, they were adapting, yes. They were being, what's the word I'm looking for? Influenced. Influenced. By the people in the area. I'm sorry, brother. You was about to say something. I cut yeah. you off. Yes, I was. Okay. I was going to say something. Yes, go <laughs> ahead. No, I was, I was going to say that um, when... Um, the, when we build altars, mm -hmm. it's for remembrance. We, okay. we, we, when the children of Israel moved around after this, um, uh, this scenario, they moved around and there were places that they stopped and worshiped God mm -hmm. and they left stones there to remember. God said, build an altar here so that you can re re worship me mm -hmm. and you can remember right. to, to worship me. And you could remember the things that I can, you can remember that even though you feel the pain in the, in the, in the small of your, your thigh, mm. you can remember that it was here that it happened. You can remember that when you left this place, that I had grace and mm. mercy once again, when you met your brother Esau. You mm. could remember when you utterly destroyed this kingdom, mm -hmm. um, these people, that no one came out against you. You can remember those things. So that's part of worship is to remember what God has done for you and, and putting up all altars. Even today, we don't mm. do it um, physically, 
but we should have the altar in our mind that we can gather around and, and sing and talk and remember the goodness of God. And that's why he had to get out of there. I think that God is calling us back to Bethel. Come remember. Mm. Remember to come and worship me. Remember where you were two years ago before this pandemic hit. Mm. Remember how I brought you out. And though many have died, you are still among the land of the living. Build that altar in your mind mm. and remember how good I've been to you. That way you can, will give you strength to make the journey as you go forward. Mm. Amen. 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 Did he finally make it? Amen. Did he make it? Did he finally get there? Because I mean, it's, it seems like just for God, when God was giving him these instructions to go to Bethel, he went the long route. He went through all these struggles. And, and that reminds me of, of when we don't follow God's directions in our, in our marriages, in our finances, in our our, we find ourselves in predicaments. You know, God has given us some instructions on how to deal with our finances, to how, how to de uh, uh, engage in our marriages and our relationships and all these different things. We go a different route and we find ourselves in different problems. Uh -huh. And now we, now, not are we in these problems, now we have to go back to God. So get, go, to go back to the, to the original uh, 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 format in, in what he has laid out for us to follow which we didn't follow in the beginning. Mm. Jacob is doing that same thing here where he had, a, he, had a instruct, he had instructions to go somewhere and he had run into all these situations. He sidestepped. That, and it, you know, it, that put him in predicaments, you know, the violation of his daughter, um, uh, uh, his sons now are commit, you know, has, has, has committed murder, you know, all these different things that's going on now. And yeah. so, not, so now he's on it. Did he finally, did he ever made it to Bethel? He, he made it to Bethel, but as we will see in the weeks to come, mm. that the, Jacob will never shake his past. Okay. And, and what is the def dysfunction in his family is going to bring him heartbreak. Mm. It's coming up in the next couple of weeks. We're, okay. go we're going to see what has happened to, to Jacob, he has reached the point of his maturity in Christ, mm. but that old stuff mm. still, still finds him. I mean, if we, if we try to put that in a modern day um, perspective is that even though we, we, we sometimes the, um, the sins of our past, mm. even after we've turned it over to God mm. and we've gone before an altar, we still have to deal with the consequences right. Um, maybe not us personally, but our families yeah. and our, our prodigy mm. that they will, will s they have learned something that does not fit um, um, their lives in a good spiritual way, mm. and it will bring disaster to their homes. And, and, and one of the part of the lesson was bringing out, um, I think, that. You mentioned earlier how he, he, he labored for, for Leah, and then he had to labor again another seven years for, for, for Rachel. And, and so it was a special part in his life about Rachel. Uh. And, and, it, and, and like you said, in the future, we, we might see different things that he has done in his past that are going to come up again where he never let it go. And... Rachel was involved with that because he, I think she, um, when she had some, she had two sons with for him. That's right. And and the lesson points out that he favored them, and so it, it's 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 like, you know, another issue. As you said earlier, it was a dysfunctional family, and he's continuing with this dysfunction because it's going to foster itself, find itself going down into the generations to come, because of his setup. I mean, he did not lay the foundation right. He did not lay it down properly. But still, the mercy of God was still with him, still working through his errors. And I, and I can relate. I can understand Jacob's struggle because a lot of times we know what's better, but we oftentimes find ourselves doing the same thing over and over, but in a different, out, different look. It's a different look, but it's the same thing over and over again. And so we... we 
we have to give God praise for that. We have to give God praise and worship him and acknowledge him because he is very patient with us. He's very understanding. He's long-suffering. That's something that, that long we oftentimes overlook because we, we, don't, we understand patience, but we don't fully understand long-suffering because it's something that we don't really participate yeah, in. Yeah, we, we don't have that kind of, that <laughs> we kind don't, of patience. We don't, we don't fully you know? understand that in its entirety. You know, First Corinthians chapter 10, 11, it says, okay. Now all these things happened unto them mm. for examples mm -hmm. that and they are written for our admonition mm. upon whom the ends of the world are come. One of the greatest lessons that I have learned, one of the greatest things that I've learned from this lesson is this. We shouldn't look at situations, people, and judge. Mm. If we see a situation, whether it's a dysfunctional family, mm. the best thing for us to do is to keep our mouth shut and to pray. And to pray. That is the greatest thing because God is perhaps doing something in them, you know, mm -hmm. with them, through them, mm -hmm. just like Jacob, mm -hmm. that we don't know about. And many times if we speak against it, if we judge, if we, if we you know, point fingers and so forth, you know, mm -hmm. we have issues of our own that God has to deal with. And we need to leave people alone and pray for them mm -hmm. and ask them to pray for us. And that's one of the greatest things I've learned. It's best we just keep and just pray. And we're going, to leave, we're going to end on that note. You know, folks, this study is a wonderful study. And, and I have learned so much from it because it's something that we oftentimes overlook is that God is love. We hear it all the time, but we, to what extent? You know, as a father, there's many times that, you know, I, I would instruct my kids to do certain things. And, and over and over, you have to keep doing it over and over again. And you have to keep forgiving and continue to showing love. And it's, it's difficult at times. So I can understand and I can see just a little bit, just a little bit through the, the needle of the needle, the eye of a needle that I'm able to see a little glimpse of what God is dealing with. And God is dealing with the whole, all of mankind. They're, they are sinning constantly, constantly, constantly. And he's constantly forgiving and showing mercy. But at some point, that just is going to come to a close. That judgment is come to a close. So I urge you to go and give your life to Christ. I urge you to, 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 to give him your all. Accept him. He has sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. Amen. And he has shed that blood. And he has shed it for you, just like he did for me. So give him your all. And he will give you all of his salvation. I thank you for the study. I thank you for my panel for being here today. I'm all excited about it. And I hope that you enjoy this study that we have this, this, this week. And I hope that you join us again. Thank you. God bless. Have a good day.